in, in the order of the world, the most important person of the family of the Trinity, of the family here on earth, the Holy Family, is Jesus. And then the next in order, because Jesus is God. Then the next is Mary, because she's immaculate. And then the next and least important in that trin in trinity of the family is Joseph, because he is, uh, he's conceived in sin. And so he didn't have any, uh, he didn't have any special graces that prevented him from being in sin. Only she did. And so he like, and I think, and, and even Jesus says of John the Baptist that there was not a greater born of woman than John the Baptist, and yet the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. So, you know, where does this leave Joseph with regard to gifts? The scriptures call him a just man. So he's a man who has righteousness. And by what right does he have righteousness? How does he receive righteousness? Because he received righteousness through the woman, he was in love with the one who had this favor of God to the extent that she had never sinned. What was the gift that Joseph had? He wanted holiness. He may himself not have been always holy in his thoughts, in his words. That anyway, he kind of is a character out there. And um, I, I think the uh, imagination and Christian uh, kind of thoughts, because of preserving Mary's purity, they never had sex. So make him so old that he wouldn't be tempted to have it. And, and that's why we get this ancient look. But isn't that bizarre to have an 80-year-old man married to somebody 14? It's just like, you know, just somebody waiting to make a matchmaker for Mary. I think he was very handsome, and I believe quite around her age. I have mystics and people who know Joseph who see him as on fire with love for her right from the first meeting. He was burning with love for her. I mean, when a man is so in love, stage struck, just absolutely smitten, that's how I see him with her. And she then tells him what her plan is for her life, that she has vowed her virginity to God. And he, in response, because he wanted a family and he wanted whatever he wanted, but what he wanted more than anything was Mary. And so he becomes virtuous through her example. His chastity, I have no doubt about, his purity, his holiness, because she brought him to that. She brought him to know how you take this fire of love that he has, that burning, that yearning in his body, and bring it to that higher love, that sacrificial love, that love of agape. Not he can begin with erotic love, but that love becomes purified. And as he goes along, day after day, being with her, what would the touch of Mary's hand be for Joseph? If she just, you know, you see lovers sometimes holding hands. That would fill him with far more joy than any intercourse would a married man. A glance of her looking at him. She loved him and he loved her with that purity of the kingdom. And he was learning that. He was learning love in its purest form 
from her. She taught him sacrificial love. She taught him patient love. She taught him every virtue. She was the source, as she is with all of us, how she reflects to us the divine love that comes so purely, so simply, so humbly through Mary. And so Joseph, as being the least in, 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 the, in the family at Nazareth, becomes now what God is going to do with him is to give him the authority. Who is the one that has the authority in the kingdom? The one who is the least. And so God puts him in authorship over his family. He knows his plan. As Jeremiah the prophet said, he knew how he designed Joseph. He made Joseph specifically for that family. And he designed him to become holy as Mary was holy because of Jesus. Joseph was holy because of Mary. He comes into wholeness with a W, holiness, which now he's living with her in this home. So the, the home at Nazareth becomes a sign on earth of the Trinity in heaven. In heaven, the, the whole Trinity and its life is a family. The Trinity, because we have no words in this human, they're only analogies. How do we know God? We have to use a word for him. Father, that fits. Father, Jesus is always called Abba, Abba. And Jesus is so in love with his father that he uses the baby word for father, Abba. Jesus, when he comes into this world in our flesh, look at me, Jesus is saying. I will tell you what the father's like. Everything that the father has is in me and I in him. Remain in me and you will remain in him. See me and you will see him. Because I only say and do what the Father asked me. Perfect obedience. What did Joseph have? Perfect obedience to the will of the Father. Marry her. Yes, sir. <laughs> go to Egypt. Yes, sir. Go to, go to Galilee. It, was he the head of the house? Are you the man of the house? Are you the one that wears the pants here? I'm the one who takes the orders. Mm. Joseph had authority because he was under authority. And his authority was the father. Now he becomes the perfect father on earth because he's listening to the father in heaven. So father was a great title for him. In fact, so much so that Jesus could call Joseph father, father. Now this puts to, to uh, rest all of the ego centered that we have. I, the, the unholy trinity, I, myself, and me. That's the unholy trinity. When we say Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I, myself, and me. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I, myself, and me. This so uh, self-centered that just has us go right down the drain of our own nothingness. That's exactly where we go because we are nothing to begin with and I hang on to this nothing. And this nothing takes me nowhere and into the empty emptiness of myself. That's so totally destruction. Rather than go to where life is, I go to where death is. Rather than go where love is, I go where hate is. And because that's every person who falls in love with himself usually winds up hating himself. And that's self-hatred. What Joseph did <clears throat> was watch the virtues of, of, of love and patience and care and tenderness and otherness. What was Mary constantly doing? What does she do? With, how could she possibly be the mother of all mankind? Because that's all she ever wanted. She wanted only others. And that's what God appointed her. And that's what she's doing. How could she possibly know every human being? 
because of God. What is impossible for men is possible for God. Mary was always re reflecting that power. Joseph learned it from her. That's why he's called the universal patron of the church. So he is our patron, is our uh, the father uh, in on earth of the Holy Family, and he is this uh, great father of, of Jesus uh, and great lover of Mary. 